Hey guys, it's Wayne Scully, tax strategist here. I'm a real estate tax planner focused on providing solutions to real estate investors in the New York tri-state area, uh, uh, serving them with tax compliance, business consulting, and high value tax planning strategies to save them thousands of dollars. Um, so what I want to talk about today is understanding taxpayer rights and the the one right I want to talk about specifically is the right to pay no more than the correct amount of tax. But before I get into that, um, I just want to kind of run through all the rights. Now, the IRS has a commitment to ensure that the system is fair, and this is done through you know, the powers of Congress and, and then the executive branch of government, and of course, the judicial branch as well. Uh, but the, the basic um, thing here is that you only need to <clears throat> pay the amount that's legally due, including interest and penalties as applicable, right? Not a penny more. Um, but before, like I said, before I get into that, there are 10 basic rights that uh, each taxpayer has, right? And uh, I'll, I'll run through them, not, not necessarily in any particular order, but they're all fundamental rights that the system is built on. The right to be informed the right to quality service, the right to pay no more than the correct amount of tax, the right to challenge the IRS's position and be heard, the right to appeal an IRS decision in an independent forum, such as tax court, the right to finality, the right to privacy, the right to confidentiality, the right to retain representation, i.e. someone like myself, and the right to a fair and just tax system. So those are the 10 basic rights. Now, I'm gonna cover the right to pay no more than the correct amount of tax tonight uh, this, on this video, okay? And so here are some things I want you to, to be aware of when it comes to these rights or that particular right. And if you believe you overpaid taxes, you can file for a refund. I think most people know that. I'm getting calls from clients asking, you know, where's my refund? How much am I getting? I'm getting those calls. So everyone knows that, you know, if they paid too much, they should be getting a refund, all right? And sometimes if they, even if they didn't pay too much, they still get a refund if it's a refundable credit, like earned income credit or something like that. So that's one, one tenant of that, right? Overpaid taxes, you are due a refund. But, but you have a certain amount of time to file for said refund, right? If you let the time lapse, you forfeited that right, all right? So um, it's generally three years from the date you file a return, all right? Um, that's the time, the window you have to, to, to claim that refund. Now, the next right is, the next aspect of this right is that the IRS um, issues notices, right? Or a bill. And if you believe there's an error, you have a right to contact the IRS within a certain period of time, all right? For them to correct the error, of course. And then the other thing I wanted to let you know about is if you discover an error after you file the return, you may amend the return, All right? So that's for the federal government, it's Form 1040X for individuals, and there's a slew, slew of other uh, similar forms for you know, other types of returns. On your business side, there's the 1120S, uh, you just refile that to amend it. And then the uh, 1120 is, is also an amended module as well. So. Uh, each module has, each uh, the tax type has a particular module that you would file to amend that particular return if it needs to be amended. So if you discover an error on your own, you can amend the return. Uh, but again, <clears throat> and you can amend the return at a time. But again, if you amend the return, you're expecting a refund, you have a certain window in which to amend it and get a refund, okay? So if you wait, if you wait five years to amend the return and you're supposed to get a refund, you probably won't get that refund. And then also when it comes to correcting errors, um, the IRS may automatically correct an error for, for you or without you knowing, but they will send you a letter explaining that they made a proposed change or they're going to make a proposed change to your return. And I just I had this happen to a client recently that, um, they got a letter uh, with a proposed change for $18,000, $18,000, folks. And they had to pay that back. Like they had to either agree or disagree with the proposed change. Turns out I was able to go in and fix the error 
and took them from $18,000 to $400 plus. So that was pretty cool. The client was very happy to the point where the client was crying on the phone when I told him what happened. In any event, I'm not going to go into that too much. My point is that you have the right to amend your return. If you discover an error, you can fix it, okay? You can fix that return. Now, if the IRS, if the IRS sends you this proposed uh, uh, notice to correct, then you have a certain window to, 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 to um, challenge that if it's something that's not in your favor, of course, because um, you certainly wouldn't want to challenge something that's, that is in your favor, right? So if it's something that, that's in, not in your favor and it's, it's totally in, incorrect, you have an opportunity, to, an opportunity to disagree with that error. And you have a certain window to get in touch with the IRS to reverse that, that change, right? It's generally about 60 days. Now, after that period runs, you may lose your appeal rights. Um, but um, that's, a, that's, again, that's a video, another, a, vi a video for another time. Uh, but um, you can, you can, they can correct errors on your behalf. Or, or, and in that case, you will need to amend the return, by the way, uh, if they make the proposed change, right? If they made the proposed change, um, you agree, disagree, send the paperwork back that they actually assigned, and then that's it, done. If you don't agree, then you have to obviously show why you don't agree, which is what I did for my client the other day. Um, and then, <clears throat> excuse me. And then you can remove, you can ask that, you can requ request that any amount will be removed if it, takes, if it exceeds the correct amount, right? So if, if, it, if it's more than what, uh, if they're giving you a bill that's, that's more than what you actually owe, you can ask that that be removed, all right? Um, and then you may request that the IRS remove any interest from your account if the IRS caused unreasonable errors or delays. If it's their fault that you end up paying interest, you can ask for that uh, to be removed, you know, usually through an abatement process. And then you have the right to submit an offer. You can't pay all the debt you owe and um, it's just gonna create a hardship on you or whatever the case may be um, because you're upside down on your income, meaning your, your expenses are higher than your income. And they're necessary and reasonable expenses, of course, and it meets the criteria. There's a whole process with that. So I'm not going to go into that as well at this call on this video, but there is a process to do that. And then you can, in that case, you can submit an offer, what's called an offer and compromise to, to pay off your, to pay less than what you owe. All right. So it's, an, it's a request, an application you submit uh, with paperwork, financial data, and the actual formal request to uh, make that lower payment and then it's processed by a certain unit within the IRS and then they come back with a yes or no okay so that's on a form 656l offer and compromise right and then for payment plans and and such and even currently non-collective status you the IRS must send you an annual notice showing how much you owe and a record of your payment okay so that's it, folks. Um, if you have any questions about this topic or any other topic I've discussed or anything like you, that you'd like to hear about in the future, give me a call. My name is Wayne Scully, and I'm with W. Scully CPA PC, always working around the clock to save you a chock full of money, time, and stress. Make an appointment by visiting my website, www.wscullycpa.com. That's www.wscullycpa.com. Or call me at 855-254-1892, okay? If you like this video or didn't like it or whatever the case may be, you know, uh, put in your comments, but please share it anyway, because somebody may like it. Somebody might find it uh, interesting or otherwise informative. So please feel free to share it. Okay, guys, thanks a lot. Have a nice uh, um, rest of your day. Bye-bye.